Hello, everyone! Welcome back to this game! By the way, everyone, I've been thinking, does it seem alright to you that so many people find out that we aren't from this world? Couldn't that potentially lead to some trouble for us in the future? Maybe we should start trying to keep our origins secretive from now on, unless explaining ourselves is pertinent and are requesting help from someone, like with Sam and Pinaka. I wouldn't worry. Remember that no one on Earth seems to be aware that another world even exists. As far as we know, the three of us are the only ones who do know. Therefore, I am willing to bet that the same lack of knowledge holds true for the people of Elvenia. They don't know of Earth's existence, aside from those we have already become friends with and that holy priestess who appear to have known all about our arrival ahead of time. Actually, that part really should concern you, because who else might have known about you ahead of time? Not many Alvenians are going to believe such a ridiculous story anyway, if you ask me. Who could? Well, you know, so far everybody who has been told... Paprika just now indicated that she's more than willing to believe us, that we magically zipped across the galaxy in a matter of seconds from another world entirely. My point exactly. That's probably because Paprika, having lived as long as she says that she and her sisters have, has accumulated more than enough wisdom over the many centuries to logically come to the conclusion that we are indeed telling the truth. She may even know something about the rose that Grandis sent us across in order to reach Elvenia from the Earth as well. You mean what Grandis had called the Path of Eden? The magical rose that are the only means of passage between our world and Elvenia? Yes, if Paprika is aware of the existence of those rows, then she might be able to help us find a way to make it back to our world once we fulfilled our promise to the people of Elvenia that we would save them from the Lord of Darkness. Perhaps we should consider asking her later on. Hello, Gruff Pirate. I guess that the pretty elf lass who Bolas befriended when he first came to Meadows was right when she assured him that the animals of the forest could bring word of your predicament much faster to me than you yourselves could. Oh, uh, okay. The animal of the forest was the one who ran ahead of us to tell everybody we were coming. Evening, adventurers. The name's William. Admiral William... Th I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Of the Holy City's late descendants of Leviathan. I do hope that your journey from Meadows was not too strenuous. We managed to hold our own well enough against the wandering monsters while on the roads, thank you. Good to hear that such youthful energy isn't so easily restrained by even those homicidal beasts out there. But what is it with this little kid's cape, not to mention the feather in his hair? Okay, I was wondering when this would be brought back up. So, Dusk. He is supposed to have a feather in his hair. And in fact, I think I remember early screenshots of the game in development actually having him with a feather in his hair, I think. I can't remember for sure, or if it was actually, um, promotional art for the game. Either way, because of RPG Maker's limitation of nine custom sprites, I guess he had to lose the feather, but still technically has it. Dusk raises one eyebrow. Excuse me? Nothing, nothing. So, Bolas had been able to inform you ahead of time about needing your help, simply by the use of a fast-moving animal that Desera had managed to tame? That's quite an impressive feat. That's why I was a bit late in coming to greet you all just now, if you'll excuse my rudeness. 
Once Paprika relayed Ballista's message to me, I did not hesitate to begin researching into the building of a new ship. I was just finishing up a book on this kind of technology when Paprika called for me. And I will gladly tell you, now that I have good reason to venture back out into the mid-ocean, I am most eager to get out there in the reborn Rosalina and dare those demi-humans to attack me and the boys again. Those murdering... Those guys won't find such easy prey this time. Oh, Master! Please do not say it like that. It does truly break this girl's heart to see the person whom she lives her life for become mad with hatred and vengeance. I forgive my hasty words, little Paprika. You're right. That is not the way of followers of the light. I know, nor should Vincent be the legacy that the survivors of the Leviathan fleet carry on their shoulders. Otherwise, the darkness in my heart wins out over the light and Serena's doctrine of love and kindness falls to ruins, doesn't it? Ah, thank goodness that you understand. Wow. Admiral, it looks as though you've got a most loyal and unlikely companion who will not hesitate to follow you to the ends of the world. That makes me wonder, does this world have a literal end of it? You never know with these fantasy worlds. Try not to sail off the edge. Mm-hmm. All of my loyalties lies in Admiral William. I will do whatever I can to support him to the day I fade away from Melvinia forever. Dusk has an anime style teardrop above his head. Miss Paprika, you seem so different from that blue haired menace who serves as the village bar hostess back in the Elven City, whom you might know as one of your sisters? Paprika has angry fumes above her head. You mean her? Did Lefeo flirt with you three as well when you were traveling through Itsuki Village? <clears throat> that shameless hussy! Her lack of modesty gives the entire polyester race such a disgraceful name. Miss Paprika, calm yourself. Such words are unbecoming of a girl of your gentle nature. Oh, dear me, I do apologize. Please forgive my little outburst. I'm so terribly embarrassed at this. Ahem. <clears throat> there, there now, little Paprika. You mustn't carry on so. Let us return to helping our new friends with their dilemma, shall we? Y yes, sir. Perhaps I should excuse myself now if you have no further need of me. Excuse me, uh, Willie? Stop right there, lad. Before you go any further, might I make it clear that, pirate though I may be, I've absolutely no fondness for such a name as Willie, understand? Oh boy, do I understand. Again, I'm glad my name is not William. That would definitely make things unfortunate for me. Gotta say, I am perfectly happy with my name being Erica. Alternatively, if there were a nickname to be given to me, Lich there in the chat likes to call me Skunkbutt. Yeah, yeah, whatever. What I mean to ask is, does this reborn Rosalina of yours that you mentioned sending back out into the mid-ocean refer to the name of the new ship you are intending to build? Was the Rosalina also the name of the ship that was sunk when you and the fleet were attacked last time? Aye, the Rosalina was indeed the name of me old girl before she was smashed to bits at the hands of those demons. That sweet girl was me pride and joy, but her innocence, as well as her sister's, was not to last, I suppose. So, none of the ships in the Leviathan fleet survived? It wasn't just the ship you commanded that was destroyed during the onslaught? Hey, could you describe the demons that attacked you for us? 
I'm sorry to have to force you to recall a bad memory for that purpose, but it might be of some help to us in the future if their descriptions match those of any of the enemies that me and the homies have run into so far on this journey. I'm a little curious about something. Why do some sentences not end until the next message box like that situation? After he finished talking, it was at the end of the message box, and then the periods came at the next message box to inform us that he was done talking. Usually I'm able to catch that, but sometimes I'm a little thrown off and then not aware that the sentence has just ended. It's no problem. In fact, I hope that they will be familiar to you, Uri, so that ye can be sure to kick their butts on my behalf the next time you see them. Still, all I can tell you is that the creatures who attacked us were part of an army led by a dryad woman who had long, beautiful silver hair but a very cold-blooded smile on her face, and at her side stood an elf clad entirely in black who had had an uncanny ability to take on the form of any species of demi-human he wished. That is certainly an ability that I would love to have. Hmm... That woman might have been the same one we had a run-in with back in the Elven City, but we could not see what she looked like on account of the cloak she was wearing. Her face was almost completely veiled. Well, like me ever loyal Paprika said earlier, vengeance isn't what's important right now. It should be our finding a better way of protecting ourselves now that we decide to go back out onto the mid-ocean. So, what did you have in mind? I'll get right to the point. The designs I was studying for the new Rosalina will provide a stronger armor for her, thus making her a lot more resistant to sinking should monsters try to attack her again. However, in order to build her after these designs, a particular type of wood called Elithane is required, and the trees this wood comes from cannot be found just anywhere in Elvania. That's the only problem hindering me from building the vessel that can safely transport you lads across the seas. Okay, so... Special wood, gotcha. And so you need us three to go find and chop down a few elephant trees for you? A task that you yourself might have already taken care of were it not involving some degree of danger, right? Precisely. The only region in all of Lelia where such a rare and precious material can be found is on the very northeastern shoreline of the continent, about a two days journey from here. The only problem is that one must first pass through a set of caverns that have recently been inhabited by powerful monsters in order to reach the shoreline where elephant trees are located. And the monsters are a bit too strong for my men alone to handle. Forgive me for having to send you all on such a perilous quest in their place, but Bola said that you should be alright considering that you were able to handle traveling from Itsuki to Meadows, and I heard that very few elves dared to venture on those ro roads anymore. Alright, we'll take care of it. Let's get going, guys. Just watch out for that unfriendly giant squid customer. Ever since things like this have started happening in the world, he has retreated into those caves and has not consented to allow adventurers to disturb his acclaimed domain for any reason since. What was that about a giant squid? Oh, never mind. Go on back to your research. That's... Definitely a bit foreboding. Of course, if we're going to have to go through a dungeon, of course we're going to have to fight a boss. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. And that involves going through a dungeon up here. Also, hello there, Strike Back. Welcome to the stream. I'm about to enter the Lelia Caves. Well... Welcome to Lelia Cavern. 
What we got here? Heal point. Cool. This would be a good spot to grind, possibly, then. Okay, so what do we got here? We got lesser Krakos and a cave dweller over there. Oh, that's right. We're going to be fighting a giant squid here. I may take a quick look at this guide, by the way. It should actually mention... Like, enemy stats, right? Yeah, it mentions there's enemies in a separate list. Would've been nice had this guide that I am looking at mention the enemies along with the dungeon information. Instead, it is way separate. So these things are weak against ice, huh? Who is it that has ice? I'm gonna say it's Lin. Well, you do a regular attack and see what Lin can do with Frost Lance. Frost Lance might actually be a little bit overkill. Wait. Oh, my mistake. They're Ice Elemental. Meaning fire attacks is what works on them. That would be your job then. Psych up. Attack up. Ooh, that's kind of a bad thing, especially when you do that. No, 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 no. What is it? Lightning? Let me think here. Lightning versus... Oh! That's the problem. Okay. The, the element is not actually ice. The element is water. Lightning against water. It's listed as ice in the guide. That, that's kind of not at all confusing. Here, back up a bit. You go ahead and attack that thing. And we will hopefully get out of this fight post-haste. Because we have spent here fumbling around long enough. Nope, you're still alive. Please stop being alive. So while I'm looking at the guide here... Seems that most of the enemies here are going to be weak to lightning. Eh, I'm probably just not going to use magic against enemies, random encounters so much. I mean, the free heal point is definitely nice, but once I get away from this heal point, it's going to be more of an issue because I kind of need to be able to heal and that sort of thing. Let me heal again since we're right here. Okay, let me not heal again since we're right here. We got a different enemy, so that's kind of nice. We got Cesars. I don't know how concerned I should be about them, but as long as I'm about to heal... This, this will be the last time I actually stop by this heal point, by the way. We kind of need to make sure we make some forward progression into this dungeon, you know? That would definitely be ideal. You know what else would be ideal? Not dying. Unfortunately, Dusk has kind of failed at that. And those guys are hiding. They're not dead yet. They're just hiding. Oh, I'm already using an angel feather. I only have a couple of... Reviving an RPG Maker 1 sucks. You know what? Screw it. Dusk, you miss out on experience. I hate when characters miss out on experience.
So as for those fish that were hiding, since they never came out of hiding, which is entirely possible, they count as dead. Okay, I think I kind of want to focus on those bats. Because they seem to hit the most. Especially against dust for some reason. Y'all need to stop hating on dusk. Seriously, why are they focusing specifically on Dusk? I know he's the healer, healer of the group, but they don't know that. Or do they? No, no. I mean, enemies can be programmed to have higher intelligence and go after specific characters. But if that were the case, they would be spamming their magic rather than wasting their turns with weaker attacks. It doesn't take a genius to figure that walking off of the lily pads isn't a good thing in this place. Nor is being too smart for your own good. In other words, adventurers and their dangable resilience are not wanted here. Do not try to proceed any further. Go home now. McCracken the Grapple. That is an interesting name for a Kraken. A part of me is wondering whether I can actually take damage from jumping into the water. Let's find out. Yep, you take 8 points of damage. Let's not do that. Instead, I will kind of consult the map. There is still parts of the guide that I want to consult. The map, for example. The map is kind of significant and nice to be looking at. Okay, we got a puzzle here. We're going to have to do something to douse the flames. Also, there is a secret here. I am already aware of what that secret is. The guide definitely points it out. However, I'm wondering how easy it is to figure out without the guide. Touch the peculiar object? Yes. I should get rid of one of the flames, possibly. Hurry, second armor. We could definitely use it. Well, rather, does could definitely use some more armor. Hopefully, we'll find it. The message inscripted into the rock wall nearby reads: "The fire within the Elvenian's heart, sparked by love, shines forth a fiery ruby light." Ruby, Ruby. So let's start with Ruby, because that is the way that was open, probably. probably. What counts as Ruby? Does this count as Ruby? Don't know! We got different enemies now. Cyanomicrobe. I just saw these guys mentioned in the guide. More importantly is the blue slime creature here, the Siam Microbe. It has a very high defense and will take a while to kill with normal attacks. How high are we talking out of curiosity? Decently high. Yeah, that that, that that's it. It's definitely high. Oh, and they got that sort of dealio going on. You can stop that now. A 
Part of me is definitely hesitant to really be making liberal use of the guide like this, by the way. I'm the sort of person that generally prefers not to use guides, especially after kind of spoiling myself with Ocarina of Time. The first time I played that game, I played all the way through using a guide, and then a part of me wishes I hadn't done that. I'd rather, I kind of find myself wishing I had played through normally and experienced the game more legit. That is why I am typically preferring not to be using a guide. And in fact, that my first time playing the game, this game, I definitely did not use the guide. Much to Lantis's disappointment, one of the game creators, while I was going through this dungeon, he was repeatedly encouraging me to try using the guide. That is ultimately why I am trying to make more use of the guide this time. I mean, I kind of insulted him before, and so I'm using the guide as a bit of an apology. I'm sorry for being a jerk. I'll go ahead and use your guide. A note attached to the rock reads one of the lily pads in the northeast corner leads to another exit out of the dungeon if you walk off of its left side. I strongly suggest you take that route. Okay, so there is a hint for the secret. What was it specifically? One of the lily pads in the northeast corner. Here's my issue with this hint. It's encouraging you to jump into the water, but we've already established that doing so damages you. So, that's actually kind of discouraging. So this is the weapon we just got. It has a very weak attack, drops your attack by 22 points, but it hits twice. Uh, I think I'll stick with the weapon that hits multiple enemies. Money is at a premium right now, so I don't want to be using up my MP because I can only buy so many he MP healing items. So by the way, the spot that we need to leap into, this right here. Oh, this is how we get to you. Okay. Dirt Merchant. THE Dirt Merchant. Buy? Sure thing. Yeah, money's definitely at a premium. I will definitely buy one more of these. I'm gonna need it for the boss fight, I'm sure. Because of course there's gonna be a boss. And that's where I'm gonna stop.